three, two, one. All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another episode of the Nine Finger Chronicles podcast. My name is Dan Johnson. I'm your host. And today we are joined by returning guests, not only on the Nine Finger Chronicles, but a, uh, a usual suspect over on the Hunting Gear podcast, Mr. Bob Polanik. Bob, what's up, dude? Not too much, Dan. I hope uh, I hope your listeners enjoy me as a repeat guest because I've yeah. uh, been on a lot lately. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, first question is I can see the wall on the back down here in your basement, right? Yeah. Uh, for those listening, the basement seems to be unfinished. Okay. Correct. But you have all of your deer heads and uh, some steel head and some Euro mounts hanging on the wall. Does your wife allow you to hang that stuff upstairs? Uh, yeah, I've got two euros upstairs. So yes and no. She has okay. a she has a firm stance against shoulder mounts upstairs, and anytime we have a debate, anytime we want, like she's trying to bet me that I'm wrong, or, or I'm trying to bet that I'm right. The the wager, if I wage that I'm right, or that she's wrong, whatever. If I win the bet, my wager is always that a shoulder mount goes upstairs, and as soon as I bring that up she won't even she won't bet me she'll just let whatever argument mm. is happening and she'll just let it go and they're not they're not big arguments right it's just whatever it's whoever. a trump card though it's like okay well i'll yeah. bet you you're, uh, you know what you're definitely wrong and i will bet you a shoulder mount upstairs yeah that i'm right yeah well, okay, so and i've got a right. i've got a perfect spot for uh especially my iowa shoulder mount and mm -hmm. uh yeah but no i do i do have a euro like uh bull elk like in our like peak of our cathedral ceiling mm -hmm. and i've got another uh euro white tail that's on the wall that kind of goes yeah. with like a collage wall that she made yeah. so yeah. yeah take what you can get you yeah know? that's right i had at one time upstairs before i finished this wall on my basement uh that i put like old barn wood on uh, and then I put my deer heads on that. But at one point I had eight Euro mounts in our living room, all kind of spread above this uh, stairway that we have that runs from the entrance of the, we live in a split foyer. Okay. So we have this entryway and then you can go downstairs or upstairs. And right above that, it was all of my, my deer heads. And I thought, I mean, I thought it looked cool, but, uh, now that I have a man cave, a little, it's a man cave slash video game room that uh, that me and the kids use the most. That's where all my heads are at downstairs over by and then above the wrestling mat that we also have in our basement. So, Got it. Um, but yes, uh, but I get one. I can have more if I wanted to, but for her space, the upstairs living room, she just wants she actually wants one shoulder mount in there i get to pick which one it is and because it goes it's stupid but it, because it goes like uh a mounted animal actually goes with the theme of our living room decor whatever the hell that means uh apparently only euro mounts go with the theme of our living room decor so yeah, i there you go i uh i hear you yep yeah yep. cool yeah. man uh let's see here i want i, I we I want to get into it. I want to get into this trail camera thing here in Iowa because I think Iowa, it, I don't know really what they're doing. And you can search for the rules and regulations on this new rule change. And I still, I still think there's some perceived gray area in especially the cell camera debate. And for those, you know, I, I was supposed to today, yesterday or today, I was supposed to get a DNR officer on to talk about this specifically, but now uh, he had he had to go to court for a case, um, and you know, like a, I don't know what kind of case, but he's involved in a case and he had to go to court for it, or I don't know what he was doing. But um, he was supposed to be on this week, but he had a schedule change, so he's not on there. I'm starting to see a lot of other people talk about it, but just a little background here and that is recently some news came out that there has been a rule change 
to where cell cameras cannot be used to they cannot they cannot be used while actively hunting and they cannot be used to aid in the take of wild game okay and so that is not just public land from what i'm hearing uh i don't think uh trail cameras can be left overnight on public land uh, along with decoys and ground blinds uh, from my understanding tree stands are still okay um, but cell cams or just any trail camera cannot be left overnight on uh on public and cell cams cannot be used to aid in, you know, because right now uh, there's an old law that says Iowa, uh, in Iowa, you can't use electronics. And th what they mean by that is walkie talkies, radios, um, like when you're doing big deer drives and a deer runs up a finger, you can't radio ahead to a truck and have them pull out and get out so people can like cut off the deer, right? So there's always been that law, but trail cameras have never really been uh involved in that law along with cell phones so i think what's happening is that they are adding cell phones into the mix they're they're it's like a blanket electronic statement right and so cell cameras cannot aid in the take of wild game which is i'm not going to say it's 100 percent of what they're used for but in in iowa man it's got to be pretty close to a hundred percent of people who have cell cams on the ground are looking for deer to shoot or for wild game to shoot right uh, i'm sure there's other people who watch uh you know cattle tanks or they watch gate entrances mm -hmm. and things like and, and to try to uh, fend off trespassing so that we got that going on and i I kind of want to talk about that today because I still feel there's some gray area and some other things that need to be talked about on this in order for us to have a clear black and white. You can do this and you cannot do this type of conversation. It's uh, right now. It's all gray area. I mean, I'm on the I'm on the Iowa DNR's website and pulled up the hunting regs. It still has. It's not updated. It's got hunting season. It's got deer hunting season dates for 2023 still. Yep. It does have turkey dates for 2024. And all it says under, it says use of CB mobile transmitter cell phone. That's just the, that's the header. And then all it says is you cannot use a one or two way mobile radio transmitter to communicate the location or direction of game or fur bearing animals or to coordinate the movement of other hunters. So right away, this hasn't been updated in my opinion. Yeah. So this is all opinion right now because nothing, right. I scoured the internet last night. You, I can't find any legal document of whatever was voted on approved, but also the header says cell phone, but it doesn't, a two-way mobile radio transmitter. Well, right there, my cell phone is a cellular transmitter. It's not a radio transmitter. Right. So, I mean, right. court of law, I don't know how much that holds up. I'm not a lawyer, but yeah, I don't know. They need to do something. They need to do something quick. Also, I mean, there's a there's a lot of lot to unpack here. The non-resident Iowa application deadline is Saturday. Yeah, there's a lot of people that probably already applied, and mm -hmm. I'm sure they're planning on using cell cams. Is there? I saw there was a thing that you can't leave tree stands out overnight. I know then along with mm -hmm. uh what no, was it tree stands? I know it's trail cameras. Tree stands can be uh okay. left on public ground overnight. In Wisconsin, I don't think they can. Okay. I think legally you're supposed to take everything down. Now, do people do that? Probably not. How are right. you going to police all of those acres of right. public like okay? Hey, uh, you tell a DNR officer their job is to now go basically look for ladder stands that have been left up or like there there's no way to police certain laws like this and uh you know ground blinds trail cameras decoys right now are what is up 
for having to be removed from public land every day from and it's and, and this is this is i gotta make this clear this is all hearsay at this point because there is no document out right now that at least none that we've found and like i said i was supposed to have a uh this guy on to clarify all this today uh but he had to bounce so um if if it's out there i'm not 100 percent sure where it's being kept or when it's going to be updated but they 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 better hurry up and figure some of this out before this hunting application season goes because now you have non-residents who are not allowed to use uh cell cameras on whatever lease or whatever right. public land they think they're going to go to i think that might change uh a couple things as well yeah um and you so you can't it's not it's all trail trail cameras right it's not just uh, cell. well trail cameras regular trail cameras that you have to physically go check from my understanding there is no law change uh, on those you can except you can't keep them overnight on public land that this is my interpretation of this so far got it okay. well there's no, i mean there's like you said there's not you know how right. the, the army of dnr officers that would have to go scout all that public land and and we have uh, i think the my home county has one dnr officer for two whole counties yeah you know what this does if this does go through now anyone that does find a trail camera on public land they're just going to feel very empowered to steal it mm -hmm. it's gonna be yep. and that's it's gonna be theft of private property although it's on public land it's yep. just going to encourage the person that would typically walk by it's mm -hmm. going to encourage them to go steal a camera check a card whatever it might be or so, at least take it down and throw it somewhere right yeah. maybe not steal it but that's yeah. you might as well steal it here's yeah. where i here's where i start to get uh so I, I currently have cell cams on a piece of property it's three hours away two things that i have questions about what is the time frame for a cell cam sending me a picture that i have a benefit of i live three and a half hours away from one of these farms i get trail cameras of a big buck I show up, I, let's say I, right now I get in my car, I drive three and a half hours, I take another 10 minutes, 15 minutes to get into a stand somehow, I'm ready to go. Does What's the time frame? Yeah, I hear what you're you know saying. What I, mean? how do I hear they, what you're how saying. Do they I, that? I think it's more so if you're physically hunting, the benefit of a cell cam is, oh, you get a picture on the other side of the farm, you can get down, jump in another tree. It's kind of It kind of falls in line in my mind with, if you fly over a piece of property, you can't mm -hmm. hunt that for 24 hours. If you fly a yeah. drone over a piece of property, you can't hunt that for 24 hours. I don't know why they don't just make that rule for cell cams and then cell cam manufacturers. If they want to stay in business and keep selling a cell camera product, why don't they just make it where cell cameras can only send images after they've been taken for 20 after a 24 hour period? instead of that instant send or always uploading at midnight or whatever set time you have, mm -hmm. they can easily make it that all your photos get sent 24 hours later, no matter what. Yeah. And, and yeah. It, it would fall in line with that drone and airplane uh, type of scouting that you have to put a 24 hour hold before you hunt. Um, yeah. I don't know. I've always kind of thought that there's a lot of people that are, there's a lot of hunters that are kind of like pushing back on the use of cell cams and talking about how it takes away from woodsmanship and stuff like that, which no doubt it does. So they're against it. It's like, well, I don't, well instead of having it on instant, just because they'll, they'll still use a regular trail camera. It's like, well, instead of doing that, just have it delay sending you a photo for a day. Cause like yeah. the, all the cameras I use reveal Exodus, yeah, uh, there's a couple of Bushnell, like you can Bushnells, you can they can send once a week. Like mm -hmm. there's all sorts of different technology, like there's all sorts of different timing you can do with it where you could still use the product, you still use a cell camera. But I don't know. I think there might be too much gray area with that. With Again, the, yeah, because with how is a how is a, a, a trail camera manufacturer going to 
build in a setting for one particular state. Right. You know what I mean? I, it's like, yeah. well, Iowa has this rule. We sent they, all they would do is a cost analysis. Yeah. And then they would say, okay, does this benefit us? Uh, yes or no? Yes, they make the change. No, they don't make the they don't make a change and right. still sell the product in Iowa. I don't know how many like in Michigan baiting is illegal, right? Correct. But in all of the Michigan hunting stores, big box stores, what do they sell? Mineral. Oh, they, they sell, sell bait. Oh, dude, we bait, come, everything. Come fall, all the gas stations are loaded up with beets and corn and carrots, and yep. all you have to do is say you're feeding wildlife and not mm -hmm. not baiting deer. Uh, I mean, what is baiting deer? Aren't food plots baiting deer? In a way, right? like yeah. Aren't mock scrapes baiting deer? Yeah, I mean so, it's a, it's an attractant. Right, it's a, an attractant. Yeah. So I mean, we could you could go as deep as you want. In yeah. this conversation right <laughs> yeah. yeah the other thing is now here here's here's the predicament that i'm in i gotta figure something out now and that is that i have recently signed a deal i'm not gonna say it yet uh i'm just gonna leave the name out of the out of the conversation for right now but i recently signed a deal a, a you know a advertising deal with a cell camera company OK, uh, you can go back and listen to some of the other podcasts. I've already talked to who they are, but I just don't want their name involved in this conversation at the moment. Yep. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and so. What do now I have to find out how to use cell cameras if, if this law is, in fact, a law uh, and I have to and, and I am not allowed to use cell, transmitted images to my cell phone or computer to aid in deer how am i going to use that and and continue to sell the advertising well for me it's easy because i'm all basically radio right so i can say that i am promoting my product to people who also live in states where this is not a law right i could get away with that but also i have to show trail camera pictures in in some of these deals mm -hmm. i know and, and i'm small potatoes you name a big hunting celebrity television show that has ground in Iowa, multiple farms and locations in Iowa, I guarantee you that they 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 are using trail cameras, cellular trail cameras to aid in the harvest of some of these deer, right? I know of I have heard some of these big celebrities talk about how they have over a hundred cell cameras mm -hmm. on their farms yes. yep. because they have so many acres. Yep. Yeah. I, I heard that in prime deer hunting season, this is a root, this is rumor mill that $3,500 a month in cell camera fees for uh wireless connection. Right. Right. $3,500 a month yeah. for that. I mean, how, I mean, we've done this to ourselves, right? Like, we only have we we got to look. The hunters just got to look in the mirror. We've taken the whole cell cam thing. I love cell cameras. I've got mm -hmm. ten cell cameras in Iowa right now. If this law goes through, I'm not. It's not. Like I'm going to drive out there and take them down. I'll take them down later in the year when I get out there. But uh, yeah, I don't. I don't know what to do about it. Again, nothing's yeah. even official yet. So right, um, right. Now, here's here's one, though, for a guy like me that is a non-resident. I applied to Iowa this year, and I am anticipating drawing. So back in March, I went out there and threw some cameras up. Yep. Uh, now, if I don't draw, I'm probably going to leave my cell cameras up. Mm -hmm. That's not against the law because I'm not hunting that state this year. So I will be able to get a lot of data for the next year, you know, the next year and a half mm -hmm. if I until I draw next year. That doesn't yeah. really have anything to do with actively hunting. And I mean, I taking a camera down on public land every single day. I mean, that's kind of, yeah. I don't know. I don't know. You got, you got two schools. It's here. over, got, it's overreach. It's overreach by the Iowa DNR, in my opinion. But yeah. But now we're getting into this conversation of technology actually being good enough to impact the natural resource so let's just say for example um 
the uh, and I'll, I'll use fishing as an example right now they have this technology which is basically a video camera type video game type quality uh fishing fish finders that forward facing sonar that will show you exactly what fish is in a snag or in uh, you know like a wing dam or whatever you point yeah. that thing there it's going to show you it's going to damn near tell you where exactly to cast what you're going to see is that that piece of technology is probably going to have a impact on the natural resource itself right which let's i'm just going to use walleye for an example uh out in mississippi river you're going on these wind dams you can see exactly where you need to go forecasts four fish right go back the next day forecast four fish and now the the average of take is starting to go up and now the the natural resource is being depleted by this technology which then would result in having to take this technology away or you can't use it or ban it because it is it's increasing the take of fish period and so i can understand that if there's science to back it up um and i i think what's happening is there are they're trying to find ways to slow it down so they can have more conversations and gather more data uh, because for for example last year i had a non-shooter buck come through uh an area that i had a cell camera on and i said i'm going to see if this works and he, this three-year-old came through this little pinch point he was actually heading the opposite direction from me based off the picture i got the buzz on my phone i looked at it and i said i'm gonna i'm gonna test it out to see if it works i rattled as hard like as loud as i could here comes this buck about three or four minutes later 20 yards broadside right in, in front of me oh, i see and i didn't and i didn't i didn't shoot him because he was not a shooter but now i'm talking to myself like dude if i mm. shot that buck a couple things one that trail camera was 100 percent the reason why i rattled yep number two um it felt icky to right. me right right like this that's a personal thing like it felt icky that i have the ability to do that right so that's a perfect example and i mean it's all over social media there are there's plenty of examples of people at their house the phone goes off they run down to a, a tree stand or blind or just stand in the woods wait for this deer to pop out boom shoot them 10 50 minutes go by from the time a picture was sent to the time the deer's dead and yeah. it, it is 100 percent because of that cell cam yeah yep. and so to, to me that right there is affecting the you know uh elk hunting and like all that information on go hunt success rates yeah success rates are going to go up because of this because of this uh data and so especially on big mature bucks uh, and i say that because i once i started using regular uh trail cameras back in the day i knew i started to know what was out there so the higher age class was in more of a threat because i wanted bigger older deer yeah yep because of that and so now it's going to affect not only the the success rate but now it's going to in, in certain cases it may sex ratio right it may yeah. like age class you know and so i just i look at this and i say i can't like part of me agrees with it but at the same time like you said overreach how do you tell someone on pub on private land what they can and cannot do on their own on their own ground yeah i don't like that i mean as a taxpayer on my own property if someone tells me that i can't do something on it i pretty much tell them to f off unless they want to pay the taxes right. um but I'll, I'll use an extreme there i'm going to play devil's advocate can you manufacture crystal meth on your property right you know I what agree. i mean like right. it's against the law sure yep. I'm, I'm not saying that i'm not saying that cell cams and crystal meth are the same things <laughs> but, 
Kind of. When I when my when my app goes <laughs> off, it's probably pretty close. <laughs> but if you're manufacturing crystal meth, you're probably also using a cell cam to survey the area. Sure. Is yeah. what I'm, so anyway, yeah. what I'm getting at is they're <laughs> both they're both illegal on private ground. If something's yeah. illegal, just because you own private ground doesn't make it legal for you to do. Right. Right. Um. So what do you think? So they let's say they ban they ban the use of cell cams uh or you can't use them to for the aid of taking deer whatever it might be what do you think that does initially to the age class of white-tailed deer and white-tailed bucks in in iowa in Cause iowa because you, you won't have you, you i mean i would think my view would be now i don't really know what's around so instead of holding out for that 160 or that 170 or that other cool 155 that i've been getting photos of all fall now i don't know about those deer really and now i'm going to be maybe pulling the trigger on a 135 or 140 a good buck because Mm -hmm. i don't know that there's these other three giants out there so what what happens to the age class in iowa well for me i don't think it changes no Uh, and the reason is uh i'm just going to talk about southern iowa the most coveted places to hunt you know pretty much the entire length of iowa south of interstate 80. now there are more areas than just that in iowa but i'm going to speak just on the mecca uh, where everyone who has money wants to buy land who who wants to lease who wants to be outfitters who wants to uh, hunt public southern iowa south of interstate 80 is the mecca for the most part yeah. now does it affect the age class and i'm going to say not necessarily in that part because people were still killing big bucks before cell cams yep. right we yep. were doing it with regular cell or with regular trail cameras that yep. just meant i had to get out of my truck walk into the woods or wherever i had the regular trail camera switch an sd card go check it on a computer and then find out so i have a cell camera or i have a uh, a camera right there i could check it when i'm walking into the woods if i wanted to you just it just you have to be there to Mm -hmm. do it you you can't do it remotely and so um now let's break that down even a little more let's say you're in a tree stand or you're walking to a tree stand you get buzz you get a buzz on your phone and now you use that buzz to go to a different tree stand okay what's the difference between that and then walking up to a trail camera that's already in the woods flipping through the pictures on the lcd screen not having any deer that you want to shoot on that cell camera so you go to a different tree stand and then that's where the big buck pops out right is there a difference in in what the usage is on a cell cam versus a uh, a regular trail camera while you are on the property that you're hunting in that scenario no but that's not going to be your typical everyday scenario right? right so it's a very unique situation i've actually that exactly what you said getting a ding on your cell phone of a buck being in one part of the property versus another I had that happen to me and it made me switch stand locations in the morning. Mm-hmm. If I would have gone where I was originally going, I would have ended up getting a crack at you know the top buck on the farm. Yeah. But I ended up not even seeing them that day because I got derailed by a stupid cell cam. So yeah. Um on the flip side, I've gotten a photo of a deer at noon, gone out that night to a stand. I had no intentions. It was middle of October. It was a 60 degrees sunny day and no crazy weather pattern would have never hunted that day got a picture of them jumped in my tree stand after work shot them that night yeah it's it's that buck right underneath that steel (laughs) it's kind of kind of wasn't stoked that it all happened that way still had to make the shot and all that but uh yeah so i think it but like it balanced itself out right in the long i mean one one time it led me to killing a buck another time cell cam led me to making the wrong decision and not going where i i should have just followed my woodsmanship 
and gone to the tree stand that made more sense. Right. So, so let me ask you this then. There's guys out there who are, are like, as far as I'm concerned, all cell cameras can go bye bye permanently forever. Then you got other guys out there that say, Hey, you know, how, how is the guy that is only able to hunt two weekends an entire year supposed to get a fair crack at that? I personally think that's a bullshit excuse because you need to, you should just be out there more. If you want to have more success, this isn't like a bread line where you're just going to get handed a loaf of bread because you don't have any food, right? This is something like hunting is an activity and an activity means you have to be active in said activity. Yeah. So for, for the guys out there, what were you doing before cell cameras were invented? Were you not hunting? Right. I don't know. Right. I don't know. Like, is, is there a right answer? Like, oh, the government's taken away. Oh, first they take away this, then then, then they're going to take away this. Well, are they really taking something away? That something has been introduced into the market before rules and regulations can be accurately written for it. Then it's banned. Is that really taking something away? You know what I mean? Like, what what happens if all of a sudden, and this is a, a crazy example. Ford starts selling a car that has rocket power and can fly. Now it can land on highways, it can fly in the air, and then it can land back on highways and go to your house or whatever. Uh, are, wouldn't there be have to be new rules and regulations made for that that product? Yeah, yeah, that's probably what it is. The deer industry, I mean, the hunting industry, DNR states on the, on that that are managing our natural resource, they move slow mm -hmm. and technology moves fast. Yep. So they're playing catch up. Um, mm -hmm. This isn't like the last state to have this. It's not the first state either. No. Right. So uh, what Arizona or Utah, one of those states, they banned trail cameras. Didn't Kansas? Ut Utah did. Kansas on public land, Kentucky on public land. I'm pretty sure Kentucky on public land. Yeah. Uh, cell cams, uh, cell, no cell cams on, on, I don't even i think kansas is a no trail cameras on public yeah i think you're i think you're right right and so i drew i drew kansas and there was a little bit of me that you know a couple of years ago before this ban took place was like okay here's what i'm going to do i'm going to go out um in the summertime i'm going to set some trail cameras in a couple yeah. places and then i'll go check them but now I'm not, now I can't do that. Now I got to go back to the, the original old school way that I hunted when I was, you know, 18, 19, 20 years old. And I, right? dude, I bet that's a good thing. Yeah. I'm looking forward to it. Yeah. There's it's a good. part of, yeah. There's a part of me that's like, do I still got it? Yeah. Right. Do right. I still got it? Well, then there's the excitement too, because you know, you know, when it's peak rut in, You've been getting photos of bucks every single day, cut multiple yeah. shooters on camera every day. And then you have that two or three day window where you don't, mm -hmm. where it's kind of dead. It kind of takes a little bit of wind out of your sail. It takes a little bit of mo whether you, maybe not everybody, but me, it's like, huh, what's going on? They lock down. What's like, but it definitely like throws you off a little bit. You mm -hmm. won't even have that different emotion. It's all just going to be unknown. Right. So you're not going right. to see a rut frenzy or chasing on your cell cams it's just gonna be you're just gonna have to go hunt and enjoy yourself yeah so yeah, yeah exactly. i don't I, I don't know um yeah there needs there definitely it's a bummer that you couldn't hook up with that dnr officer he would definitely have to make sure he had all his facts lined up too because yep, yep. that that was gonna be i mean the, i can't even imagine the amount of people that are going to tune into that trying to figure out what is going on with yeah. I, I was texting you last night <laughs> yeah. trying to yeah. trying to figure out what's going on. I, I don't understand how they're gonna how they're going to police that. I get so, I, they, so, they on, can't. so on that, and there's here's an example. I believe, and I don't know if Montana changed this, but I believe it was either Montana or Idaho. I can't remember the state. And I this was an older rule, but I believe you had you couldn't have higher than eighty percent let off on your bow. So you couldn't. Mm -hmm. So if you shot an elk or shot any 
animal with a bow that had 85 percent let off technically that was illegal i talked to a dnr officer out there about this and they were like yeah we're never going to ding anyone on that unless we are looking for a reason to give someone a ticket and confiscate their animal because they're being a jackass so mm -hmm. does this give the dnr just a tool that if something shady is going on on a piece of property or a public land or whatever this gives them something to kind of fall back on and, and ding a hunter on i mean i think they're they'll probably use it to whatever because like you level. said it's not it's not enforceable there's got to be i mean there's got to be hundreds of thousands maybe not hundreds but there's got to be tens of thousands of trail cameras out on public land in the state yeah. of iowa oh yeah right now there is right right and 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 they're on private quadruple that you know what right. i mean like right and so you could go drive down any farm in southern iowa during the rut that have a truck in the driveway or even something bigger to where a let's say a dnr officer knows where a hunting celebrity hunts right some of the biggest names and all they do is they just they they don't need a warrant they walk right out there they look at their food plot and they see a trail camera a cell cam over top of that food plot and they go that camera right there is helping you hunt deer on this farm ticket right ticket and so then now we have uh these hunting celebrities who are now knowingly breaking the law because they have written contracts with trail camera companies where they're supposed to promote their products yeah it's gonna there's quite a i didn't even think about that that's quite a big ripple effect that's gonna happen uh -huh. think about all the trail camera images and like 10 second videos that end up in like youtube videos and not like hunting videos on sportsman's mm -hmm. channel and stuff like that yep that's not going to be allowed anymore unless they want to bring you know yeah for the most part the, yeah for the most part the big names they don't share trail camera pictures online no until the animal's dead right right, right, right. And they do yep. that because they don't want neighbors to know what's on their properties yeah right and so that's why uh i stopped you know i i do some times but for the most part i've kind of stopped posting trail camera pictures of this year's bucks because of that reason you know there's a lot of people out there who follow you or they know where you hunt and they follow you on social just to get an idea of what is on on said property um and so i don't know man i'm i'm really trying to figure out how they're going to do this because you say no trail cameras on no no trail cameras or cell cams on private ground people will not listen to that no that law they no, will all, not pe people will not listen to it period also also you can't leave a trail camera up overnight so what the dnr are going to go out there and yep. with with headlamps and try to find you know mm -hmm. how is that really going to be enforced i don't know it'll be no. enforced by the all the other ways that uh I guess you would I mean, call it illegal habits happen on public land, and that is someone rats or calls it in. I won't right. say rat it out, but hey, man, I saw a guy with a, a cell cam. I saw a guy. There was one time I was uh, scouting. It was it was in August. I was scouting a piece of public. I was following this real heavy trail, and I see a ladder stand, and I see a trail camera. And what direction? is this trail camera facing it's over a freaking food plot that somebody planted so they came in off the river probably with a rototiller they tilled up an area on public ground and then they broadcast uh clover I and they had, they had a clover plot back there <laughs> right on a stand right on a, a trail camera on public land on public land wow so that's pretty brazen if you ask me <laughs> yeah. and, and, and and now i mean i know guys who every time they see a tree stand on public land they'll they'll call the dnr and give them direct directions of where it's at yeah and i don't know what those guys do with that information but there's something i i don't know 
like all all it's all driven by the quest for and the desire for a big buck giant antlers giant antlers giant antlers. yeah why why giant antlers bob why are we obsessed with giant antlers because they're freaking cool <laughs> i mean <laughs> uh yeah i don't i don't know it's i mean i know I, i've gotten away from that there was a time where like mm -hmm. inches and size was like that's what i that's what i that's what i was going after um and that was that was probably only like four or five years ago and now it's like i just enjoy hunting the rut and watching deer do their thing and mm -hmm. yeah i do i i want to shoot a good buck i don't put uh i don't go to i don't if i draw iowa this year i'm not saying oh it's got to be 140 or bigger uh i just want to shoot a good buck hopefully it's hopefully it's four years old or something like that if it's a big if it gets my ticker going and it ends up being a big three-year-old or something like that uh yeah it's just but yeah the I think the the big antlers coincides with an older deer. Older deer present the bigger challenge, so you can always fall back on. Well, I'm just trying to challenge myself more. It's like, yeah, you are, but like, if you have a if you have a seven year old deer with a 120 inch rack and a five year old deer with a 180 inch rack, they're standing side by side. What one are you shooting? You're shooting the one with the big old rack. So, mm -hmm. so, this is, so to say like the challenge of trying to kill the oldest deer around, it's not always the most accurate thing. There is a part of it that like the visual awe of that big yeah. old rack, it definitely plays a factor into what we're, uh, what us hunters are looking to kill. So I don't know. Yeah. I don't know, man. I wish, I wish antlers and racks were more like boobs uh, because big boobs are great, right? Let's, yeah. I mean, we, we, we can look at a big pair of boobs and we can go, oh, those boobs are awesome. But guess what? I get fired up when I see smaller boobs too. Right? Yeah. yeah. So, <laughs> I mean, why can't we treat antlers like boobs, right? We just enjoy all shapes and sizes of boobs. Very true. Very true. Yeah. Yeah. Make that into a t-shirt, man. <laughs> yeah. That's the next full sneak. Uh, I like it. Right there. Um, I like it. Yeah, so I don't know, man. I, it, it's, it's all. I mean, it's what. It's just. Again, it's just all this cell cameras. This whole movement. It's all about catching up with that big old buck, and it's mm -hmm. all driven. I mean, and we've all just done it to ourselves with, with media, with everything we consume, everything that is put out there. Like, big bucks sell, small mm -hmm. ones don't. Yeah. Um, that's just how we're wired as humans, man. Yeah. I don't so, know that I don't know how you change that. No. Besides, I think I think guys getting older further into their hunting career, whatever you want to call it, I think that settles down. Mm -hmm. Um, old timers, you know, dads wanting to just get their kids out, but you know, that next generation's coming and they're they they've all they're gonna know hunting with always having cell cams, always having trail cameras, and always having like you know being able to see every single deer that's out there like there's yeah. really not a lot of unknowns anymore no. maybe you can get on some big tracks of public land um or big farms that nobody hunts for some reason there's some bucks that have never had their their photo taken but i don't i don't think there's many big bulls big deer yeah. big bucks that haven't had their photo taken that yeah. I, in in the united states north oh, america the, so. the only thing that I can really think of would be on a giant track of tillable ground. Let's just say Nebraska, South Dakota, um, maybe even in Iowa, where they live in a tiny pocket so small in giant egg ground that everybody overlooks and they're they're living in a fence row all year round. Uh, and maybe there's a cattle tank somewhere nearby where they can get water or right. um uh and there's just it's just for most people they look at it and go oh it's just flat ground there's no cover there but for a deer there could be a subtle change in terrain that's the only place that i can see a like a giant white tail slipping through the fingers of hunters yeah yeah in, in places like that um so and, yeah 
So what do you think the right move is here? I mean, banning cell cameras on public land. I'm not for that. I'll just put that out there right now, especially as a non-resident. Um, even if, I mean, if they try to do that in Michigan, I'd be annoyed as well. Um, cause I think there's a lot you can learn. I mean, you don't necessarily need cell cameras, right? You, you don't, no, you don't. You could get away with just, I mean, there's the information you can get from trail cameras though. Just, just regular trail cameras is, is incredible. I mean, it mm -hmm. does, it does flip the script more in our favor than probably any other tool that I can think of out there. Yeah. So. Other than digital imagery on yeah. like uh, on go hunt or right. like that, but, but you know, you don't even need that because like Google, you can go to Google and find satellite imagery. Right. right. And, and, and so I'm just trying to think of the, like, we look at this direction that everything is going and the direction is easier, easy button, easy button, easy button. I started out off the, probably the hardest possible way a guy can hunt. And that's with shit equipment, no camo and, uh, and having to sit in a fence row to hunt. Right. I didn't know shit about it. My parents didn't know shit about it. And they just, put me out and I had to learn everything the hard way, which is why I am as successful. I'm, I'm aiding my success to my experience. And so now what you have is you have no experience. You don't, you have a lack of experience going into the woods, but you don't need that experience anymore because you have technology that is flattening the curve for you. You can, you can, you can find a trail or a deer print and you can yep. put a trail camera on that trail and you can, Oh, a big buck pops up. Guess what I'm going to do. I'm going to be there tomorrow night. Mm -hmm. Big buck shows up. Boom. Dead. You didn't yep. have to do any scouting for that. You didn't have to know what thermals were doing for the most part, like maybe some, some slight wind direction knowledge would be helpful. Yep. But outside of that first time in best time in, right? Yeah, it's definitely gotten easier. For it's made it all easier for sure. So for what's sure. the next? What's the next thing, though? Right? Like the next thing is, I mean, they already have live footage trail cameras, so you can. I'm sure you know you can turn a camera left or right. You can zoom right. in. You can zoom out. That's coming. Yep. If I had to guess, they already have something similar to that, like a more of a more of a security camera type thing than an actual trail camera yeah right uh what's to say that there's not a device that you put on a feeder and as the deer start to come in it triggers a motion sensor you get a beep on your phone and now you can control the shooting device from a feeder attachment and you're able to shoot a deer from your phone right what what's what's stopping a crazy idea like that uh you're right uh right and that's why all these states need to get ahead of all this technology or just up to speed with it so that's a, that's a great comment you made what it, what does it mean to get caught up with it does it oh. mean taking it away or does it mean putting rules and regulations on it of how I think you it, can use it i think clearly defining rules and regulations that's so, the best. That's a, a, a cure of an awesome first start. Right. Right. And I so, know you need you need you need someone to be the authority on this whole thing and and set an example and, and come out with a crystal clear what you can and cannot do. Uh, it's just so hard to enforce. I mean, even using the technology of a cell phone, mm -hmm. um, texting your hunting partner that's on the other side of the farm that a big buck's coming his way. Um, mm -hmm. If you look, if you read a, if you read a lot of different rules and regs from different states, like that's not that's not allowed. Like they always have that in there about two way radios. Like that's old school. That gets like not a lot of people use two way radios anymore. Everyone's texting each other, right? So um, it's the same thing: a two way radio or a text message. They both are communicating the same instantly, the same way. Right. Um, so yeah, there's 
it just everything needs to be everything needs to be looked at and again they, they leave each state is always going to individually manage the resource so they're going to each state's going to have its own rules right there won't be one blanket rule that covers the whole 50 states right let's let's uh let's do a hypothetical here and let's say all trail cameras are banned across the entire country right huge uproar at first right mm -hmm. industry like businesses would fail yeah. uh, people would get in trouble for using them uh people would uh you know uh, have to change how they hunt now okay how but then after a while of ripping that band-aid off i feel like people would slowly get back into this this they would stop bitching about it because you have two options you can bitch and quit or you can just keep moving forward with whatever said rule and regulation that you agreed with yep. or disagreed with yep as all things in life you can either quit or rise to the challenge yep and so if you were to see things go one way or the other where it was either all cell cams are banned or all cell cams are legal what direction do you think we're heading towards with that specific conversation i honestly think that we are headed towards cell cams being banned yeah across across the states it might not be all of them there might be a couple left over but i mean they're gonna start they're gonna start dropping like dominoes yeah. in in my opinion next two to three years it may it may be a good thing i mean I, I absolutely love cell cameras. I've got 10 of them sitting in. I got 10 of them in Iowa across a thousand acres. And I've got another 10 in Nebraska on two different farms. And when they start growing those fuzzy racks, which is right now, I absolutely love it. And it will be a big bummer to go away. It's something that my wife and I will sit on the couch and we go through photos and we dream about November and getting out there and archery hunting. And yeah, sure. I'll miss that. But, I think on the flip side, you might see a decrease in non-residents, like non-resident tag purchasing, right? Really? You, 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 I would think, I would think if people can't scout as much, they might not be as successful. They can't monitor it from home, do all that. I mean, it's only been really the last, what, 10 years or so that like, there's been like the big out of state hunting push, mm -hmm. like social media and YouTube and all that made that super popular. Everyone realized that you don't need to hire an outfitter to go hunt elk, to go hunt bucks in Iowa, Kansas, Missouri, wherever. So if you, if you dial back some of the technology on it and the exposure to it, yeah, you could lead to a decrease in, in guys uh, buying out of state hunting tags because they want to know what's on the property they hunt yeah because you're spending a thousand dollars on a tag yep. and you're going you're doing that to kill a certain animal and yep. you kind of want some sort of you want to know what's out there you know before you yep. go i'm never right. gonna i'm never gonna stop you can take my cell cam you can take all my cameras away right now i will not stop going out of state and chasing it because I've spent enough time in the trees, even with cell cams, like they're, they're around and cell yeah. cams only tell, gosh, not even half the story. Yeah. So yeah. just like a regular trail camera. Yeah. Um, here's your, go, yeah. What's, what's your take on that? What do you think? What are we headed towards full ban or, or no? Well, I don't think you can fully ban something. I think what you'll, I, well, I'll say this. I, if I had to choose between the two, I would I would choose full ban. But I think what we're going to be going to is towards a uh, a baiting type scenario or a, a like a mineral station type scenario to where you can use cell cams throughout the entire year, but during the hunting season that you cannot. Got it. Right. So you can get a good inventory uh, from the summer or postseason about what's around, what's there. If you're not on a property, you're not actively hunting it, they're going to be legal. But the second you step on that property, it's illegal. 
right? right? So yeah. I think right. we're, we're, we're headed towards that. But I think another thing, what we're headed towards is the rise of the resident. And what I mean by that is there are residents out there who are getting very frustrated with their DNR officer because everywhere they go, they're losing land to outfitting or leasing or uh, by non-residents. They're also uh, maybe all their public spots have now been exposed in, in some way, shape or form to non-residents. And what you're seeing here is residents are starting to bitch about how their hunting experience is going down because, and they're using the excuse of non-residents, right? Every piece of, every piece of, didn't Montana do, like, they cut non-resident tags, or was that Wyoming? Uh, one of those states cut non-resident tags because residents were complaining that there were so many non-residents hunting at their trailheads and things like that. Yeah. And so I think what you're going to see now is an acceptance from residents to pay higher tag prices. Yeah. And uh, Oklahoma, they went from $300 for two buck tags and three doe tags to $700 over the counter for that this year, I believe it was. And so now you have over double the cost of a non-resident tag book or whatever they sell. Iowa has gone up. Illinois has gone up. You know, all, uh, all of these uh, non-resident tags are going to be, are going to continue to go up. And I think what's going to happen is that's going to force non-residents to not come to the state, but the state itself it needs that revenue from the non-resident tags because states like, uh, I believe Wyoming, like the non-resident revenue for hunting is just eclipses resident you know yeah didn't what residents didn't wyoming just like double the price of their elk tags i think so like, think almost, like, like they're a lot they're a like, lot now like almost two grand i don't know about that i thought it was like 1500 12, yeah 1500. Maybe, maybe regardless right. yeah. regardless it's a lot of money and so um and i think what's going to happen is the residents are going to the re the residents that hunt the state are going to say you know what in order to make my hunting experience better, aka less re non resident hunters, I am willing to pay X number of dollars more to, to lift that revenue back up. Yeah. If, if in that way, shape, or form. And so um, I would say, like, what do you pay right now for a resident tag in Michigan? uh 20 bucks for a buck tag you can get two of them so it's 40 bucks okay so you pay 40 bucks for two buck tags as a resident and then what is your do you have like a hunting fishing combo or do no. you have a hunt, separate hunting license separate fishing license separate separate yeah i think fishing is like 28 bucks or 32 bucks i can't remember yeah so in iowa we have a combo tag or it's a combo hunting hunting license fishing license so i get that i think that's like i want to say that's 28 bucks right and then now my buck tag in iowa is 28.50 or something like that so i get my 28.50 and then uh and then i get 28 dollars and 50 cents for my buck tag and then i get a 28 dollars and 50 cents for my doe tag and every doe tag after that is 12 dollars okay. until uh after that and so i look at that and i'm like what i'm about to say is my personal opinion i would pay because this is what i do man i would pay 50 bucks yeah for, for a buck tag right i would pay i'd pay a lot because it's what i do now other people will probably agree with me i know on some of the forums that i've read i, I hear people say like they've already raised it to 2850 like this is you know this is ridiculous that i have to pay this much money to hunt a deer well you look at how rare it's becoming to find ground especially in iowa yep. you have you have two options you can knock on doors until 
you are blue in the face and you will you still won't gain access in Iowa in certain parts of Iowa. So then you have to go to private or public. Yep. You know, and you you talk to anybody in the state of Iowa. Maybe it's not as bad as Michigan or Pennsylvania or New York, but it is still pressured ground. It is still oh, yeah. pressure pressure oh, yeah. on public yep. ground now. Yep, for sure. And for so sure. I don't know. I think the residents of every state are going to end up voicing, starting to voice their opinions much more, as you should. If you're paying but, taxes in that state, you have a voice, right? But if if you do that, you do that with raising the price of non-resident tags, you're, two things are going to happen. One, it's become so popular, there's such a demand for it, people will still pay that price. Mm-hmm. And the other thing that's going to happen is it's then going to become more of like, out of state hunting will become like solely a rich man's sport. Yeah. It's our, I mean, it's, it's already really going that way. Oh yeah. Um, but yeah. that, I mean, I mean, it, it, I, be, I truly believe within a decade, non-resident elk tags are going to be average price, 2000, 2,500 bucks. People are going to pay it. Uh, I won't, it will not surprise me the day that, a non-resident Iowa tag is a thousand bucks. It's already like six sixty or something like that, yep. and you can't even draw it without a couple preference points that are sixty bucks a piece. So really, you're already looking at eight hundred dollars for mm-hmm. an Iowa, a non-resident Iowa buck tag. Yep. So more if you hunt one of the more coveted. Oh, units. oh yeah, yeah. Zone yeah. four, five, six. Yeah, you need like four, five, six points. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. yeah. Oh, uh, Wyoming elk. I mean, gosh, you need. I guess you don't. I guess I just saw. Yeah, general tags. You needed like five points to draw a general, a general mm-hmm. unit tag. Mm-hmm. So I don't know what's going on with Kansas, but it's all the 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 five years ago of being more tags than out of state hunters. You know, more there were more tags available than what out of state hunters were buying stuff like that. That's all gone. Like out of state hunting is, it's going to get real, real tough really, really quick. It already has. Mm -hmm. It's just going to get worse. And that's, I'm okay with that as long as the resource can handle it and it's managed properly by the state. And I think what was happening was, was uh, states like Nebraska. You, that's, is it a, is it a draw now? Uh, They're putting more tags into the draw. So I don't know. Nebraska's uh that's a t- I don't know. They don't have a lot of tags. I know that much. Yeah, but in order to get your Nebraska tag, did you have to apply or enter into an application? Or did you go over the counter? I went over the counter. Okay. So you might want to look at, you might want to look into that because I think Nebraska changed this year. Yeah. Yeah. So I know you're smiling because you want me to shut up. <laughs> but <laughs> everybody already knows. I know. So, I know. I know. That's I know. the same. That's the same thing with South Dakota too. Like South yep. Dakota state that I hunt, they they went to an automatic. You're guaranteed a tag if you apply. Now they cut them back, and I've been lucky to apply uh, to draw the last two years. Uh, and but I uh, there's going to be a day where I'm not going to draw a, a South Dakota tag. Yeah. Yep. So. Yep. Um, let me ask you one more question. What would the reaction be if all of a sudden the DNR in Michigan said only one buck in the state of Michigan? I would have no problem with it. Um, I, but it's really not having two buck tags. Isn't really the problem in our state. It uh, only four percent of hunters fill that second tag, that second buck tag. Okay. Uh, so yeah, it's more of a money thing. That's why they have two buck tags is because uh, the revenue it generates. Which why I I would love it if they went to one buck tag and made it forty bucks. Right? Easy. Um, I would have no problem with it. I think people would get a, a lot more choosy um, with what they're shooting. I live in the northwest kind of corner of the lower peninsula where it's under uh, antler point restriction. Mm-hmm. So there's 12 counties all 
within each other and it has to be three on a side. I would love it if they made it four on a side. I would love it even further if there was some easier way to identify the age of a buck and that's what we could do, but that's just not possible. It's not possible. Um, but yeah, Michigan, do we have so many deer here and so much habitat, but we also have so much pressure and so, so much, so many hunters that like the deer here are just on high alert all the time. Mm -hmm. and it's yeah. so hard. It's so hard to even get bucks to three years old, let alone four or five. And then, you know, obviously catching up with them is even harder, but, uh, yeah, it's a, it's a challenging state to hunt and but yeah there if we managed it differently i do believe we could we could start really uh improving our age class here yeah so yeah and that's so four percent of the second bucks are tagged which tells you that nobody is like from that statistic nobody's really chasing a second buck or, or yeah or having luck with it i don't know and i don't know the numbers of because you don't have to buy both buck tags you can just buy one mm -hmm. or you can buy your combo tag your combo gets you the two buck tags is there a discount so, code is there a discount with that i don't believe so they're okay. both i think they're both 20 bucks um but yeah that and those those are not recent numbers i think that was like back in like 2020 2021 that i heard that those type of numbers but yeah, it's still, I mean, Michigan's very tradition rich. I, I think this saying, if it's brown, it's down, kind of originated here. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. Um, but yeah, I, that's, I don't know. Yeah. No one's, no one's worried about a lot of hunters, you know, APRs barely passed. A lot of people are like, I, I don't care how you can't eat the horns, you know, mm -hmm. another big one. So, um it's just not important i think it's gaining traction in the state of michigan but uh yeah we're still nowhere near ha having the, the hunting quality that like uh even uh, ohio just to the south of us i mean southern michigan is better i'm in northern michigan and it's just harder i mean winter's longer get comes earlier and it stays a couple weeks longer um we don't have as much nutrition in the soil up here very acidic um mm -hmm. we do have a lot of we have tons of public, we have millions of acres of public land up here, but uh, it's not logged very well. Um, Iowa, I know a lot of public land. Farmers can uh, grow crops on it, so that that's always awesome. Mm -hmm. uh, we don't have any of that up here. There's some, there's some like uh, quality or management work that goes on where some food plots get planted on public land, but that's if you know where those areas are, they just get pounded by. Mm -hmm. other hunters so yeah it uh but yeah I would, I would have no problem with it i don't i don't ever kill a buck in michigan so i've only yeah. killed I, I mean i don't really hunt here during the rut anymore so that kind of takes away from my success but uh i've killed a couple decent ones here but it's been uh it's been a few years so you know with all these rules and regulations cell cams crossbows baiting uh things like the number of buck tags like do you think there is a way to implement a a strategy on a state on a nationwide level saying that all states have to follow these specific guidelines that would help manage specific wildlife uh, and, and take and take rules i guess you would say no i don't think you want to do that because each each you know no i think you want to leave it up to the state i mean even in even in the state of michigan northern michigan is so different than southern michigan as far as hunting quality goes right like, like the two of those shouldn't even be managed the same um yeah. so yeah i wouldn't want to see that state by state I, I really believe that they need to leave it up to the individual state to manage the resource mm -hmm. so but do you feel like rules and regulations for certain states are better than other states oh yeah for sure yeah so what i'm getting at is uh let's i'll just use iowa for example i feel for the most part iowa does a really good job on how they uh manage their harvest okay yeah. so uh, we have quotas per county do you think that iowa if i took 
Iowa's rules and regulations and just put them in Michigan, does Michigan become better? I believe okay. so. I believe okay. so, yes. Yep. Okay. Uh, if I took Iowa's rules and regulations and took them down to Florida for deer hunting, do you think Florida becomes better? No, because I don't I don't know much about Florida, but I don't think they've got a really big deer herd. So I don't yeah. I don't I don't know. That's a tough right. one for me to answer on. Yeah, yeah. Again, all these questions, man, I, hypothetical. So, and I, I can't wait to get this guy on who's going to clarify all this for me once he's done with his court case. But yeah, man, um, lots more to come. I think what, like to end this, I think what you're going to see, maybe you agree with me, maybe you don't. I think what we're going to start seeing is, is a lot of rule changes. A lot of rule changes that are okay. Well, Kansas and Iowa did it. Well, we're going to do it too. Yeah. Type of deal, you know. Like, okay, well, if these guys are doing it, and we're and the residents are bitching about it. Well, here's what we're going to do about it. We're going to. I mean, Kansas gonna, and go ahead. Go no, go ahead. I was done. Kansas and Iowa are probably the best whitetail states, right? Right. Uh, so, are they setting precedent? You know, like is yeah. that are they the, are they the leaders? I will tell you this whatever changes are coming on the cell cam front trail cam front whatever for iowa the deer definitely are winning right oh it's, yeah it's good for them so yeah. hunting in iowa is going to continue to be very good this mm -hmm. is only going to continue to help iowa bucks. the legacy of iowa yeah or kansas exactly. or yep. i mean you think about it let's think let's talk about these states a second who are doing this Kentucky, out of all of the states that touch Kentucky, other than maybe Ohio, Kentucky trumps Tennessee. Kentucky trumps all the states to the east of it. Yep. To the, you know, yep. uh, Illinois. It borders Illinois. Other it, than Illinois. Maybe. Yeah, maybe. Does it touch Indiana? I don't know. It's close enough to it, though, yeah, right? I, I think uh, maybe it does. Um, and so what we got here is like Iowa, you know, other than, other than, uh, Illinois, certain parts of Illinois, uh, Iowa is better than all of the other States that it touches better than Minnesota. It's better than Wisconsin. It's better than Missouri. Yep. Um, Kansas is definitely better than, well, better than, better than Nebraska, it's better oh, yeah. than Colorado, it's better Kansas. than Missouri. Kansas way better than Nebraska. Yeah, I mean, I don't know about Oklahoma. Oklahoma's a different creature, man. Uh, that now you're starting to get into Texas territory, where there's just a lot of feeders, which is Kansas too. But um, you know, Kansas is, would most people would say hunting in Kansas is better than. Uh, Oklahoma, depending on what you're going for. Yeah. So all of these destination admired states are changing the rules and regulations. And I feel like more states are going to probably be doing that. That's oh, yeah, I'm, for sure. Yeah. yeah. Tip, tip of the iceberg. And, uh, and yeah, it is what it is. Uh, I'll still have a blaster in the rut in those states as long as I can yeah. get a tag and get in a tree. Yeah. So, I've said this before, man. You know, I'm an advocate for trail cameras because I use them. Uh, they've changed the way that I hunted uh, back in the day when I got my first trail cameras and I was able to see what was in the woods. It changed how I hunt. But if there was a ban that would come through, and I'm not just saying cell cams, let's just say trail cameras in general are no longer allowed in the woods. I don't think it, I'd be 100% bothered by it because I would still go out and hunt deer yeah and you know you know what farms have good deer on them it's yep. we've got all the as long as you i mean especially if you can keep all your historical data yeah. uh you're just gonna you're gonna be all right so right. we right. also started hunting before like trail cameras right kind of like right. we, we went to you know we went to school and everything before cell phones drove mm -hmm. before cell phones mm -hmm. uh yeah we're kind of so yeah if it goes away so be it exactly um, yeah cool well we've gone for a while now 
So, uh, Bob, man, I really appreciate you taking time out of your day uh, to hop on once again and, and uh, chat with me. And uh, I'm sure I'll talk to you again soon. Absolutely. Thanks for having me, Dan.